Robert De Niro is such a timeless and iconic actor. The star of Goodfellas, Raging Bull, and The Deer Hunter, in between starring as Vito Corleone in Godfather Part 2 and Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver, we have a little film called Novecento, aka 1900. <laughs> and by little film, I mean never ending. Okay, it's 5 hours 40 minutes, almost as long as The Irishman. It's a really weird Italian epic about the friendship of two boys, one of which is a wealthy future padrone, Alfredo, played by Robert De Niro, and the other is a poor future communist, Olmi, played by Gerard Depardieu. Today I will discuss this film and the events that occur within. There will be plot spoilers as we progress through the video. I will be talking about events chronologically, so feel free to stop watching whenever you feel like it. Before you do subscribe, or you'll be baptized Regina, Queen of the Bitches. I don't want it anymore! I baptize you, Regina, Queen of the Bitches! The film's opening is fantastic. It's Liberation Day after World War II. A peasant goes into the forest and gets shot by a fleeing soldier. Donald Sutherland's character and his wife are stabbed by pitchforks as they try to flee. Meanwhile, De Niro has a gun pointed to his face by a child. There is chaos ensuing and we don't know who any of these people are or why this is happening. You feel bad for Sutherland and there is no Depardieu so maybe he died at some point. Who knows? There are two parts to the film, but structurally there are three. The first two hour structural part follows younger versions of Alfredo and Olmi starting in 1900. Born on the same day, Alfredo has an estate and a huge inheritance, while Olmi is a bastard born to a large working class family. They eventually become friends, but the class struggles will put a lot of strains on their friendship. There's a scene where Olmi catches frogs by the river and attaches them to his hat. There's a scene with the zany granddad in the shed as he gets a girl to fondle him. There's another scene where Alfredo and Olmi challenge each other to lay under a moving train. One reason why this film is weird is because of its undeniable Italianness. You have to suspend your disbelief, not because it's unrealistic, but because Italians are Italian. Granddad is sleeping. Let's jerk off in a field. For no reason, let's put my hand in shit. It's what Cinema Paradiso avoids because by the 1990s, they realized this stuff is too weird for foreign audiences. In this aspect, it's more like Fellini's Amacord, which I still have the VHS tape for. Yay. So this film is very Italian. It's also very communist. When Olmi returns from selling his frogs, his father forces him to share the money with everyone. There's more communist stuff later in the film, but just know that whenever there is a communist moment, I groan a little. It's a political ideology based on left-wing delusion. While making this film, The Great Leap Forward was finishing in China, which killed 30 to 45 million people, and there was an active Cambodian genocide occurring. But don't worry, communism will save the day. Right, Bertolucci? The first part ends with Olmi leaving on a train to work in the docks, while Alfredo lies under the train tracks. This first part of the film is poignant, and works really well as an introduction to the characters and the setting. 
The second structural part of the film is really long, about three hours, and mostly focuses on the relationships between Alfredo, Olmi, and their girlfriends slash wives within the context of the rise of fascism during the 1920s and the 1930s. Olmi becomes full communist, while Alfredo has to befriend some fascists. Alfredo isn't fascist, he's wealthy, and that's triggering enough for the commies. The fascists are portrayed as pure evil. We are introduced properly to Donald Sutherland's character, Attila, and his wife, Regina, who are super ultra fascists. They don't just give evil orders. Their evil personality includes killing a cat, a child, and a crazy old lady. They are really evil, and they really overact as well. Gradually, the events in the first 10 minutes start to make more sense. The villagers' ideology becomes more and more obvious. Communism saves the world. Fascism is pure evil. But let's not forget about the terrible acting. This film would get multiple golden raspberries if the ceremony existed in the 1970s. Alfredo's girlfriend, Ada, Arda, becomes his wife, and wow, she is annoying. At a dance, she tells everyone that she is blind. Then she tells everyone she was lying. Like, what was the point in that whole charade? And she reads a poem to Alfredo and then threw it away because two people is too many to see the poem. But that's kind of dumb. She also pours wine on Regina and calls her Regina, Queen of the Bitches, which, I'll be honest, is not very nice. On top of this is a thick French accent and a poor dub, so any scene with her in ranges from tedious to hilarious. Overall, the second part is quite dull. Events in the film continue into the Second World War, but the interesting characters still don't do a lot. The part ends with horse poop being thrown at Attila by the townsfolk. Olmi leaves and Attila guns down a few of the villagers. This is the most eventful the second part gets and is an epic way to end this section. Then we move on to the third structural part of this film. The introduction of the film continues. The villagers chase communists into the distance. One of the female villagers climbs a straw wagon to shout what she sees. This moment is really epic and cool. I see Bertolucci got a crane to put the camera on. Attila and Regina are put into a pig's pen. Attila gets shot dead. Olmi returns and the town has a trial for Alfredo, the Padroni. The trial is so communist. Like, so communist. There's a red tarp and they talk about workers' rights. I lost my teeth working his fields. Can you bring them back? Well, no. Duh. They don't kill Alfredo in the end, but the idea of the Padroni is dead. Olmi and Alfredo fight while the camera pans to the red tarp in the distance. The film skips to present day where Olmi and Alfredo are still fighting. Alfredo? The film skips to present day where Olmi and Alfredo are still fighting. Alfredo sits on the track with his head against the rail. As the train passes, his younger self appears under the track. It's a beautiful ending, but I don't know why, there's a message in there somewhere. So overall, a film that has some fantastic eventful moments and many uneventful dull moments. There's a lot to think about and its epic scope has left an impression on me. Thank you for watching and if you want more content like this, uh, you should click subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. And I'll see you in the next video. Every Vittorio. Thank you.